Hello friends, this is the 15th video tutorial inside the video lecture series on machine learning. So in an earlier lecture we have seen about what is the kind of data pre-processing required before you start actually coding inside the machine learning system. Uh, we have seen about uh, what kind of uh, descriptive uh, statistics also you can immediately uh, calculate with the help of some of the few pandas function. So in this lecture we will see about how to do this feature scaling inside the scikit-learn library. So let's start. So why this feature scaling is first of all required? Because uh, let's uh, consider this very uh, small and hypothetical uh, data set. Individual uh, rows is having uh, one column. So this is one column. This is another, this is a one column. This is, an this is another record, sorry. This is another record this is another record there is so there is a total four record inside that and there is a total five columns so five column is nothing but the five features so this is the first feature this is the second feature this is the third this is the fourth this is the fifth feature so if you consider the very first feature or second feature so you can come to know about that this data lies between the range 14 and uh, 56 somewhere if you consider this second uh, feature this data lies between a cell 4 and a 7 somewhere okay 4 and 8 actually maximum and minimum value so uh, there is a lot of uh, disparity between the range of individual feature and if you supply this a uh, non normalized data not scaled uh, version of this uh, data to the machine learning algorithm it won't behave the way we are expecting and it will mislead to the result so why this pro pre-processing is required because if you don't uh, scale it to the certain range it will mislead to the different uh, result and our testing result will be very bad so that's why this feature scaling is must requirement now what does that feature scaling means now individual feature if you have considered every feature has a different range every feature lies uh, between dif around the different uh, average value the different mean value and uh, there is no common thing where the all data is like common range between the all data are lying so wh what we do in the inside this feature scaling we will try to put those data in s with the very s similar range plus similar kind of mean or similar kind of uh, standard deviation on the top of this data so let's see these are the uh, different types of scaling functionality so in this tutorial we are going to see about this mean max scalar standard scalar normal how we can normalize those data and how can uh, binary uh, data so there are a lot of other scalars are also available inside this scikit-learn library but we are going to see about this small scalar functionality inside this scikit-learn library so let's start about so i have uh, given this uh, small description about this individual uh, feature scaling so we'll come to know about that what individual scaling will do so let's start with this mean max scalar okay so what this mean max scalar will do it will just uh, subtract this minimum value from this original data and divided by the range range is nothing but the maximum minus the minimum I have taken this formula from directly from scikit learn library and there is a scale version so whatever the uh, intermediate X you have got you multiply with the range plus add minimum so you want to shift the range by default the range is 0 and 1 so g minimum will be 0 and maximum will be 1 so s scale is nothing but s underscore std so this way this mean scale max scalar work let's see how uh, we can apply those things with the help of uh, scikit learn library so uh, we are not going to use some actual data because uh, to understand that principle we'll take a very small uh, matrix kind of uh, three uh, records and the three feature and we'll apply this min max scalar of this scikit learn library on the top of this data and we'll come to know about how it behaves and what is the meaning of it so why a min max scalar is useful when you want to shift 
all of your feature to the particular range basically then default range is 0 and 0 to 1 for the min max scalar functionality so let's first uh, import uh, numpy library because we are going to uh, create the array with the help of numpy library and we will uh, import the pre-processing module of this sklearn library so from sklearn import pre-processing okay okay there is a typo here okay we got it so we have successfully imported this numpy library and sklearn so uh, let's create a very simple uh, data set with the np dot array function so we'll uh, create the matrix of 3 cross 3 size i'll just put 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay okay so let's understand this data set because uh, for the understanding purpose i have taken a uh, generated this data set it is a very small matrix so it is having a three rows and three columns which is nothing but the total three records are there and individual record has a three feature so if you take this one comma two comma three it is nothing but the first record 4, 5, 6 is an another record and 7, 8, 9 is a third record and if you consider the first uh, feature of individual record which is nothing but 1, 4, 7 second feature is 2, 5, 8 and the third feature is 3, 6, 9 so we have got this data to demonstrate the principle this is a very small data on a very small data set we will apply this min max scalar ok so let's start about it uh, inside this pre-processing module there is a huge amount of this all scalars are exist so from the pre-processing step let's uh, apply this min max scalar okay and we have uh, I told you already that if you don't supply any kind of argument the default range is 0 to 1 so let's uh, apply 0 to 1 for timing then we will change and will manipulate it and min max okay so what we did here actually uh, uh, we have created one object of this min max scalar uh, class which is having the feature range 0 to 1 so what we are trying to tell this function that uh, we want to create a M m scale version of x which is a scale version of input data which is having a 0 to 1 now we will apply this min max to the fit fit function which what it will do it will uh, just calculate the minimum and the maximum value and then we will apply the transform on the top of it so it will actually transform this uh, all input data with the help of this equation between the range 0 to 1 so individual feature uh, will come down to the 0 to 1 right now all values all features are ranging in the different different range so if you consider this first feature it is ranging from 1 to 7 the second is between 2 to 8 third is 3 to 9 so we want to shift it to the all features between the range 0 and 1 so this transform function will transform this value from 0 to 1 and this fit function which nothing but the calculate minimum and maximum for individual feature with the help of this min max object and min max object is nothing but the class of this min max scalar class okay so let's see what it will do okay so it has uh, generated all feature range between 0 to 1 all data are kind of uniform we have taken that's why all values are, uh, are kind of similar across the uh, 
all three features 0 0 0.5 and 1 now let's see how uh, with the help of this formula we have calculated uh, this feature so you will get actual idea that how min max scalar works internally okay so uh, for the first feature for the first feature uh, let's find what is the minimum value first of all minimum will be 1 maximum will be will be 7 so if you consider the first column is nothing but the first feature so for the first uh, feature we are going to calculate so you'll get to know about the actual functionality of min max scalar now let's uh, calculate this x std so if you apply for the first value 1 1 minus 1 because minimum is 1 divide by the range range is nothing but the 7 minus 1 so if you calculate this this will become a 0 so for the first for the first value of the first feature the range is down to the zero so what it does actually whatever the minimum and maximum range it has uh, scaled down to the zero to one so minimum value become a zero and a maximum value become one whatever the intermediate values are there that lies between the minimum and maximum it will scale down accordingly accordingly uniform way between zero to one so let's see for the fourth how it works so this will become a zero let's see how it goes for four so just instead of same function input is four minus minimum divide by the range which is nothing but seven minus one so if you think this three by six which is nothing but zero point five the same way 7 you can calculate so 7 minus 1 7 minus minimum divide by range so it is 6 by 6 1 so this way individual feature with the help of min max uh, scalar we have scaled down individual features to the okay it is not making any sense okay 0 to 1 it has scaled down now uh, we have seen that how this formula for the min max scalar function is uh, working but the second uh, equation we haven't applied because the maximum value is 1 which is nothing but the feature range now we have scaled down all feature to 0 to 1 now suppose we want to scale down to suppose 10 and 12 so let's see how it will behave okay so all values will lie between 10 to 12 all features value and whatever the intermediate value it has taken now suppose we want to put between 10 to 11 okay so between 10 to 11 all datas are uniform so 10 10.5 11 for so 1 4 and 7 has been transformed to 10 10.5 and 11 and if you <coughs> if you consider range between 0 to 1 1 4 and 7 has been transformed to 0 0 0.5 and 1 so all datas are kind of normalized for us in this case now we can supply this data to individual machine learning algorithm so this is about the min max scalar now let's see about the second one is nothing but the standard scalar let me save it first standard scalar <coughs> so uh, in the last like uh, last uh, data what we have used if you consider this uh, data 1 4 and 7 for the first uh, feature so for first feature uh, there is a if you find suppose the mean so 7 plus 4 plus 1 is 12 12 divided by 3 is, is nothing but a 4 so all data are uniform uh, are 
mean is 4 in this case mean is 5 in this case uh, mean is 6 so all data are lying around different different mean all features are lying around different different mean so suppose with the, you want to put those uh, data with a very uh, similar mean which is nothing but the zero mean and a unit variance across this uh, data so how we can uh, go ahead so we'll uh, see with the help of the standard scalar so let's first import this standard scalar so we have pre-processing and standard scalar so we have created object of this trans standard scalar and we will fit it to the X and those X let's uh, assign it to the standard so what it has done actually it has created the standard scalar function uh, object of the standard scalar class and apply the fit method on the top of it which nothing but it just calculate the standard scalar now how the standard scalar is working so it will calculate the mean across the all feature and it will subtract those mean from the original data and it just divide it by the standard deviation of that feature now uh, with the help of this uh, standard scalar class uh, let's see what kind of data it will generate and empirically also we will see okay we need to apply this transform function also on the top of it which nothing but it will transport so fit will find the mean value and the variance across individual feature and transform will actually transform your input data x and it will transform with the help of this formula this scale version okay so we got it so if you consider this uh, data for the very first feature all data are very uniformly distributed have you taken so uh, mean is uh, nothing but the 4 so from the second feature uh, let's print here uh, the original data also okay so uh, from the second value of the first feature it has subtracted the mean so that's why it is zero so all uh, data has been around zero so mean is zero and variance become one so how uh, uh, this has been calculated with the help of our formula for the first feature let's calculate it yeah, how this minus 1.22 uh, came so what it has done for the first uh, feature first value std i'll apply hash std underscore zero so mean is we know already about uh, one minus the mean is four and we need to divide it with the help of standard deviation of the full feature so full feature is 147 so to get the standard deviation we have std function inside the numpy array library and we will supply this one four either you can write this 147 or you can slice it with the help of uh, slicing functionality of this array inside the numpy level so we need to go with all rows of the first column so it is nothing but 1 4 and 7 we are supplying here so let's see what it will generate okay we haven't displayed it okay it has generated exactly same value minus 1.22 let's independently see what this np dot standard deviation mean for. so if you apply this thing here it has generated this 2.44 so if you divide minus 3 divide by 2.44 we will get this value and it is nothing but it is same as np dot std the first column also you can supply this way one four seven okay the very first value will comment it 
okay so we got almost same value so this way it will calculate the individual uh, value so in a first case uh, first scalar functionality we have seen that it just scale down the value between 0 to 1 and it is eligible to apply the machine learning algorithm especially for the learning part of the machine learning uh, system this kind of scaling is a must it will definitely boost your system and uh, in this standard scalar for the different uh, feature the ranges are uh, very different so we have scaled down those ranges to the very exactly same mean across all feature and the unit variance across the feature and we have seen how with the help of formula we can calculate it and how uh, uh, with the help of the standard scalar functionality we have seen so there is a two more left which is a binary uh, scalar and a normalized so uh, in this tutorial that's it for this lecture in the next lecture we will see about this uh, normalize uh, how you can normalize this data and how you can binarize those data i hope you enjoy listening this video thank you guys for the watching please do like comment and subscribe it